Do I need 4 gigabytes? Do I need 8 gigabytes? Or do I need 16 gigabytes of memory for gaming with my CPU? That's the question we're going to answer today. Welcome back to Tech City. This is Brian coming to you guys today with a video on that discussion with memory and gaming and how much do you need, especially for modern day titles like maybe Fallout 4, GTA 5, Battlefield 1 and whatnot. But today I'm going to give you guys the straight and simple answer and that is you want 8 gigabytes of memory if you're just gaming. If you're going to be streaming and watching porn whilst you're gaming at the same time, then you probably want to go with 16 gigabytes of memory. Now, I know a lot of other YouTubers out there have done tests where they've tested 4 versus 8 versus 16 and they've found 4 to be okay and they've done great videos and I'm not going to discredit any of their work I mean they've done the information they've done the tests but I'm just going to talk from my own experience today and how I think it kind of differs when you look at it in a different light and in particular I'm going to pay attention to the i3 550 build that I did a few months ago where I only had 4 gigabytes of memory in that build and you know when I was playing GTA 5 the game was stuttering. It was stuttering pretty bad. And now when I added in another four gigabytes of memory for a total of eight, the stuttering was completely gone. I was blown away by how much of a difference four gigabytes of memory made in a title like GTA 5. And now you may say, oh, well, I didn't have that problem, Brian. I mean, this YouTuber didn't have that problem either when he tested it on his Skylake CPU with four gigabytes of memory. Now, the difference is between a Skylake CPU and a Nalum CPU, which was the i3 that I tested, is that the memory control is much better on the Skylake CPU. So now if you're doing tests, especially like four gigabytes versus eight gigabytes on a new school CPU, like a Skylake CPU or even a Haswell CPU versus an old school CPU, which is arguably where people are only gonna be able to afford four gigabytes of memory, you owe it to your viewers to kind of test out this memory on old school CPUs because that's where it's gonna make more of a difference because the newer CPUs can utilize that memory better. And so you're not going to get as much stuttering. You're going to get better results with a Skylake CPU on 4 gigabytes of memory as opposed to an i3 Nalum 550 on 4 gigabytes of memory, if you catch my drift. Now, another thing is when a lot of these other YouTubers test these uh, 4 gigabytes versus 8 gigabytes, for example, I'm going to focus on this area specifically, is that when they run out of memory, they then access data from an SSD. And now a lot of guys on a budget aren't going to have 4 gigabytes of memory and an SSD. I've never heard of that. You're going to have 8 gigabytes of memory and an SSD, or you're going to have 4 gigabytes of memory and a hard drive. And now accessing data from a hard drive is a lot slower, especially in a video game, than accessing data from an SSD. And also if we look at an AMD CPU, for example, an FX8320 versus a Haswell 4670K, which I've tested in the past, when I had both 8 gigabytes of memory on both systems, I found that the Haswell CPU could stream a lot better. And this was because it could utilize that 8 gigabytes of memory a lot better than the AMD FX8320 could. And that was a big thing in the industry at the time was like, oh my God, the FX8320, it's got eight cores, it can stream a lot better. Not really. Like I found that the 4670K smoked it in two of the games that I tested. I was blown away. The AMD CPU was completely choking on eight gigabytes of memory as opposed to the 4670K, which was just, you know, smooth sailing. So that was something that shocked me. And that was something that I realized that not all CPUs are created, not only on the IPC area, but also on the way that they utilize cache and also furthermore DDR memory. So now if we contrast this to the old school CPUs like the i3-550 or the x5460, for example, then we can see that these CPUs have weaker memory controllers than say, for instance, a Skylake CPU. And if since we're on a budget and we're gonna go for a cheap CPU, cheap motherboard, we're going to be asking ourselves, do I need 8 gigabytes of memory? Can I just save that $20, $30 on the 4 gigabytes of memory and just stick with 4 gigabytes for gaming? And the answer is, and this is where it comes in the most important part of the video, is I would recommend going for 8 gigabytes on these platforms because you're not going to get the stuttering. And as I've tested in the past, that 4 gigabytes versus 8 gigabytes makes a huge difference for games. Every time I've tested on DDR2, even overclocked, and for instance, an entry level i3 550 with 8 gigabytes of memory, it's made a huge difference versus 4 gigabytes to a point where the 4 gigabytes has always had stuttering, even on a game like Metro Last Light. I've noticed stuttering. So if you want to get one of those old school CPUs and then overclock it 
and play the latest titles, which those CPUs are more than capable of playing some of the latest titles, then you want to go with 8 gigabytes of memory so you don't get stuttering. Though if you are playing games like CSGO, for example, Dota 2 or League of Legends, then 4 gigabytes will be absolutely fine. Though again, modern titles, you're going to want to go with 8 gigabytes of memory. There's some final things before I get out of here. I wanted to touch on why this whole 4 versus 8 versus 16 gigabyte uh, debate came into play. And it was mainly due to memory prices. A couple of years ago, memory prices were literally double what they were today. And before they doubled up, they were really good. They were even lower than what they were today. So memory is come down to a price where it's pretty cheap. And if you can, I would recommend going overkill on memory because you know future titles are only going to use more memory. The larger the levels get, the more physics are introduced and whatnot. But I mean, me quickly looking on Amazon for literally like two minutes, I found like a $60 Z97 motherboard, $60 16 gigabyte kit of memory, and also a 1230 V3 Haswell. Now that's a bare bones kit that will absolutely kick gosh you couple that with a gtx 1060 or even a 1070 you're going to have an amazing experience at either 1080p or 1440p gaming so really cool for the money you can pick up some great deals out there so really if you can get the extra memory always go for it it's always a better thing to do that but you will want at least eight gigabytes if you're just gaming and also, what about memory for video editing? How much do you need in this scenario? And ultimately, this one is depends on your workflow. What bit rates are you editing at? How much footage are you capturing? What program are you using? Premiere Pro, are you using Vegas 13? How many programs are you using at once? I mean, me personally, I've got, you know, sometimes I've got uh, Premiere Pro open. I've got uh, Adobe Audition open. And I've got After Effects open all at the same time, and I'm editing footage. And for me personally, I need 64 gigabytes of memory. That's just what I need. You know, if people are like, oh, Brian, you, you know, you only need 32, you idiot. Why are you using, why are you saying you need 64? Well, it's like to that person who says that, it's like, well, dude, just come over to my house and see the, you know, the memory error messages that I'm getting Premiere Pro when I've only got 32. When I drop 64 in there, error messages go away. So for me personally, I need 64 gigabytes of memory. For you guys, I don't know. It depends on your workflow, as I said before. You can get away with 16 gigabytes of memory if you're editing at like 50 megabits per second, 1080p. Uh, you know, if you're just editing 4K footage at 100 megabits per second and you're not editing big clips, you can get away with 32 gigabytes of memory. Though if you're like me, you probably want to get 64 gigabytes, or even if you want a Linus's crew, then you might want to get like 128 gigabytes of memory. It just depends on how much you're editing and what your workflow is and what your bit rates are. So anyway, guys, hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, then be sure to hit that like button. If you have any questions or comments about memory and gaming or even video editing then be sure to drop a comment in the comment section below and i'll get back to you as soon as i can and i'll catch you in the next tech video very soon peace out for now bye